What's going on YouTube? Uh, today we're going to do a video review of the Viso Maui Moai. Uh, sorry, I can't really say the name. Viso Moai uh, dash cam. So I'm really going to put it to the test and I'm actually going to film this entire review using only the dash cam. So all the audio, all the video and everything's going to be from the dash cam only. So stay tuned. Let's see how this thing does. So let's just uh, get into this review really quickly here. Uh, at first, I just want to talk about what comes in the box. Uh, the dash cam itself with the power cable and a mounting bracket with some strong 3M double-sided tape comes with uh, inside the box. Also with an instruction manual. The instruction manual doesn't cover all of the features that the dash cam has, but it gives you a good feeling about how to navigate through the menus and everything like that on how to be able to uh, set up the camera. Everything that you see here are pretty much the default settings on the camera. I didn't mess with uh, a resolution or exposure or anything like that. Everything that you are going to see in this video is how the camera came from the factory. But you can change exposure. You can change resolution. You can change it from dual camera where you're recording both from both cameras. Or you can change it to where it's only recording one camera. And I believe this camera goes all the way up to 2K resolution at 24 frames a second at its highest when you're doing a single channel. What you will need to set up this camera and be able to use it is a micro SD card. You have to have a, a high speed micro SD card. Uh, this uh, camera supports from 8 to 32 gigabytes. Um, I do have a 64 gigabyte in the camera right now. It appears to be working, but you know who knows what's going to happen once it starts filling up more. But uh, the the manufacturer does recommend from 8 to 32 gigabytes. Now, how much how much recording can you do with that? Uh, if you're doing the dual channel 1080p 30 frames per second with audio on, you're using about 60 megabytes per minute per channel. That basically breaks down to a little bit over four hours of recording for the dual channel so four hours is plenty that's that's really all you all you're gonna need this camera does loop recording so you can actually set it up to uh, do recordings in one minute intervals two minute intervals or three minute intervals and as the memory card fills up it's actually gonna loop back and record over old video and that way you don't really have to worry about you know um, running out of uh, memory space while you're while you're driving around and missing a recording uh, because of the loop recording uh, you occasionally have to format the memory card which is very simple and you can do that from the camera that's all co covered in the instruction manual I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about the angle of the lens um, you know I have a Rexing camera in my other car that's a 170 degree wide angle this one is 150 degrees um, yes, it is narrower, but honestly, the difference isn't that huge. Um, I, looking at the, vi the dash cam video, it gives you a wide enough view of what's in front of you and, you know, anything that you need to recover, uh, record or document that's in front of you is going to be documented by this camera. So even though it has a lower viewing angle or a low, lower, uh, field of view, I wouldn't let that deter you from buying this camera. So this dash cam is designed or marketed towards uh, drivers for Uber, Lyft, taxi cabs. I'll actually add to that and say, you know, if you're a parent uh, that has a teenage driver, it's probably a good camera that you can use for, for those purposes as well. You know, just make sure that, uh, you know, your child is safe in the way of um, being able to document the scene of an accident, it, God forbid, if there is one. But, you know, if depending on where you live a lot of times drivers under the age of 18 can't have too many passengers and you know if you're concerned that your uh, your child might be taking too many passengers to lunch during their uh, lunch break from school and stuff like that dash cam is going to be a nice thing that way you can actually record what's going on in the car so you know um you can try and keep tabs on your kids if that's if that's something that you would choose to do so uh another thing that has actually come up pretty well with this camera the audio recording is well enough uh, and I do a lot of vlogging and normally I take a GoPro and I'll like stick it up on the windshield and then I can drive around and I can vlog with that GoPro. But with this, having the camera being able to face me, this dash cam is kind of a dual purpose for me. If, if I wanted to be able 
if I wanted to be able to vlog while I'm driving around talking about my, my YouTube channel, my car channel and stuff like that. So, I mean, this, this does work as a vlogging camera as well. So one of the other things that people usually look into is what is the, the operating range, temperature range for these cameras. This camera, uh, according to the manufacturer, is capable of handling temperatures down to 8 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And I know there's going to be people that are in climates that it's going to get colder than that. You know, it's just simply if your, your car's sitting out uh, overnight and you're going to have some sub-zero temperatures, it's simple just to unplug, slide it off the mounting bracket, and just bring it in for the night. Um, a little bit of exposure to the elements isn't really going to hurt the camera, but prolonged and repeated exposure could shorten the life of the camera. Nothing against this camera. They're all like that. My Rexing camera only uh, can take up to 140 degrees, so technically this one is a little bit more durable being able to go up to 150. Now, you may say 150 degrees. Well, I don't live anywhere that gets that hot. It's not necessarily the air temperature outside, but when you park your car in the summer and if you're parking in the sun, the temperatures, if the camera's in direct sunlight, can exceed that 150 degrees. So, you know, with this camera and any other dash cam that you might have, you may take some consideration on where you park it, um, park your car and have some trees to shade it or park so your car's not facing direct sunlight and stuff like that just to protect the camera. I want to talk a little bit about the G-sensor for the camera as well. Uh, the camera does have a G-sensor in it to where if it detects an impact from a crash or something like that, it'll automatically lock the video from that crash and save it uh, on the, to the memory card, and it will not overwrite that. That's kind of a safety thing to where if you do get into a crash, you want to save that video for, for evidence or whatever it is that you may need, and the camera will automatically do that with the G-sensor. Now, the question then comes, if it has a G-sensor, when I park the car and I leave the car, is the camera going to record if somebody backs into my car or crashes into my car while I'm away. Unfortunately, the, the camera does not support um, that type of recording. When you turn off the car, the power source to the camera is turned off as well and the, pow the camera will power off. Now, this is an easy problem to fix if you want something to record all the time, even when the camera is off. Uh, a company by the name of Blackview makes a power adapter for about 20 or $30. It plugs directly into the battery and it will monitor the battery voltage and will keep the camera running for however long you want to set it. It could be hour, two hours, six hours, eight hours, indefinitely, whatever it is you set it at. And it's going to monitor the voltage of the battery in the car. And if it drops below a certain voltage, it's going to turn off the camera. That way you don't drain your, your, your battery to dead and, you know, uh, and you're not able to start the car. So if it's if you're looking for something that is going to run the camera to record things while you're away, you can buy this camera and then spend just a little bit extra for that Blackview power unit. So for the price point of this camera at this time of the recording, it is a $200 camera. At that price point, you start getting into some of the, we'll call it more luxurious type features. Um, you can get GPS uh, on the on the cameras as well, which will document your speed, will document your location, and you know put all that extra information along the bottom of the screen if you choose to have it recorded into the video. This camera does not have the GPS uh, installed in into the unit itself. What it has instead is Wi-Fi, and that gives you the ability to download an app, and the app is actually called called Tima Cam, T-I-M-A-C-A-M. -A -A and you can that app and you can actually connect directly to this dash cam and you can view your videos from there. You can save clips and you can actually email them from the app to whoever it is that you need it. So again, the reason why we talk dash cam is in case there's an accident. An officer comes to investigate the accident um, and you know it could be something to where you had a green light, someone else ran a red light, and you know the officer needs to find out who was in the wrong. It could be a situation to where you're stopped at a, uh, at a light on a hill, the person in front of you is driving stick shift, and they roll back and hit your car, but then they turn around and they tell the officer that you rear-ended them and not that they rear, uh, rolled into you. This is where the benefit of the dash cam comes in. You can actually just use that app, 
and pull up the video and show it to the officer and he can look at it right there on your phone and he can see what's going on. If he wants a copy of that video, simply just email it directly to him from that app. You don't have to pull the memory card or anything out of the camera in order to recover uh, the video. Not that it's not hard or not that it's hard to pull video from uh, from the SD card that's in the camera, but being able to easily pull up the video on your phone and just say, here you go, you can see it, that's a great thing. If you don't want to use that app, there is a screen on this camera as well, and you can actually just review recorded videos on that screen and just play it from the dash cam itself, and you don't have to worry about the app. But, you know, I think that's a great feature that this camera comes with that, you know, should be used. It's it, it makes, you know, just recovering and reviewing video that much easier. So I honestly think that that Wi-Fi enabled access to view the cameras and stuff through an app is better than GPS. But when you're in this price point of the upper 100 to $200 range for the cameras, you're only going to get one or the other. You're not really going to get, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth video to a phone and GPS, you're going to get those in some of the higher end cameras that are around $300 plus. So my initial impressions when I first received the, the box and got this dash cam, it's a plain brown box with uh, Visio, um, Visio Mayoi uh, printed on the outside of the box. Just very, very clean, simple design. When you open it, you have the dash cam on the inside and initially picking it up in just the feel of the dash cam it, uh, itself actually feels that it's that it's a quality camera it, it's you know I, I know there's a lot of concern about buying um, products from China and you know it could be a knockoff or whatever cheap build or anything like that picking up this camera it actually felt like it was quality it felt it was durable the the chrome buttons seem a little off, you know, they're, they're, they're all right, they're aesthetically pleasing, but personally with me, it, it just feels like, it, you know, it feels a little tacky, but that's just my, my opinion. Chrome isn't my thing, um, but, you know, maybe a gray, gray buttons or silver buttons or something like that might be a little bit better in my opinion, but honestly, the color of the buttons isn't going to affect the functionality of the camera. So... After viewing some of the uh, daytime recording and everything like that, the the camera looks like it does well. It, it it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to. But what you really want to know is what does this camera look like at night? And the camera does have an automatic night mode um, that it'll turn on and it'll adjust um, the lighting so it'll record um, things better at night. And I'm going to show you a video clip that I recorded last night, and I'm actually going to put it side by side with my Rexing V1 LG cam dash cam so you can see the difference between this camera with the night mode and the Rexing's camera in the way of trying to just pick up what light is available. Um, I'll tell you right now, it, it has night mode, it has this yellowish greenish sort of tint, but you can really see into the dark areas with the camera. The drawback with that is it gives you a little bit of washout when you have some headlights coming in towards you and stuff like that, but it, it's not unbearable uh, compared to the Rexing camera where the dark spots, you can't see them at all, and you can only see where like your headlights are shining on the roadway or spots of points of light from uh, street lights and everything like that. So we're gonna go on a little bit of a drive here. Uh, at night. Uh, it is snowing, so uh, we'll put this camera to the test. Now, night mode for dash cams, regardless what you have. Uh, in my other car, I do have the Rexing VL camera system. Um, and at night, uh, other than what's directly in front of you, the, the camera doesn't really pick up too much. Uh, internally, you know, for this dash cam, it is marketed for the Uber and Lyft drivers. Um, I'm going to add on the fact that you can use it for, um, you know, your teenager is driving a car and you're going to use this as a camera system to where you're monitoring your child. And I, I apologize for the angle right here. It's, uh, I'm still trying to get it positioned right here, but uh, we do have the rear view camera that's blocking your view of me, but this still gives you a general idea about the cabin area right here. Um, if I were to turn off this light, you're not able to see anything 
really inside the car here unless there's some ambient lighting from street lights coming through. So if you're going to be using this as an Uber camera system, uh, a lift system, and you're going to be driving at you may want to consider leaving a dome light on in the back where your passengers are or just having some sort of internal lighting if you want to be able to see them. If it's just something to where you want the audio recording, um, that is there for you as well. I am actually recording audio through the camera right now and it's doing very well. Um, as for recording outside, directly in front of us right now, the I'm kind of in a neighborhood heading back into town um, the, the street lights and stuff like that. It's not terribly dark, but I think this camera does pretty well in using its WDR, its wide dynamic range, to enhance the dark areas and give you a little bit more light. It's not a natural appearance. Everything kind of has a yellowish tint to it through this video camera system, but it is picking up the darker areas. Uh, so that way if you needed to use the video for video evidence because of an accident or something like that, this camera is going to be able to pick up a little bit more than, than um, say, the Rexing camera. Um, and and it, it's it, not that the Rexing's bad, bad or anything like that, but I think this one does better than the Rexing in picking up night um, conditions. To sum it all up, I feel that this uh, Vizio Mayoe camera is uh, a, a good camera. It's 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 worth the money. Uh, you know, there are so many cameras out there on the market right now to where, you know, you can get buried looking for things. You can, you're, you're, you're looking at cameras that are front facing only, 720p, 1080, uh, 2K, 4K, front and rear dash cams. You're, they're, the possibilities are are limitless on what you're looking for. What I have to say about this camera, it is marketed towards Uber, Lyft, and taxi type drivers. What it's marketed for, it hit the it, it hit the target perfectly. It it does exactly as it's advertised. Um, if if that's kind of the thing that you're looking for in a camera, this is the way to go. Um, and you know, it may not have a rear camera mounted on the back of your car so you can look out the window, but you know. I'm in a Toyota Highlander right now, and you can see all the way out to the back of the vehicle. At night, you may not be able to see it as well. You might just see some headlights or something like that. But, you know, during the day, you can actually see all the way out to the back. And, you know, it may not be that that clear view from the back where the other dash cams have it mounted on the back window, but this still gives you a little bit of something. The, this camera is, is, is worth it, in my opinion. I mean, there's, there's different things that I could use it for, and, you know, the longer that I have this camera, the, the more features that I'm discovering on it, and, and the better it gets. The size is really compact. You can mount it discreetly up behind your rear view mirror. You can, uh, you know, tuck it up to the top of your windshield. When it's there, it's not annoying. It's not, it's not in your face. The screen goes into standby after a minute, or however you set it. You can actually, you know, have the screen on all the time. You can have it go in standby after a minute, two minutes, three minutes. It's all customizable with that. If you want to ask about some of the negative parts of it, uh, there's a lot of lights across the top here. You know, I have a blinking blue light that indicates that it's recording. I have another light that says that it's recording audio. I have another light that says that powers, uh, it, it's receiving power and charging. It has a little capacitor that's in there, so it's not charging a battery that's going to last for hours. It's just one that will power the camera for a few seconds after you turn off the engine. But you know, with all these lights and stuff like that, I don't know if it's necessarily worth having those. Maybe the recording light, instead of having a blinking blue light, just have it a blinking red light, because at night, blue tends to draw your attention a lot. But at this point right now, I am having to nitpick to find problems with this camera system. This camera system, everything that it says it does and everything that it promises to do, this camera delivers. I've recorded this entire... Uh, this entire product review using this dash cam only. I, I, I didn't pull out my GoPros. I didn't pull out my 4K cameras or anything. I relied on this camera for this entire product review. And I really feel like for a dash cam, it did everything that it's expected to do and then some. So, you know, if, if you're thinking about buying this and you're, you're reluctant or hesitating, I'd say don't hesitate anymore. I, I'd say go ahead and pull the trigger and buy this camera. It's definitely worth it. Anyways, 
appreciate your time staying with me and checking out this review. Hopefully I was able to answer some questions for you. Um, and, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to post it in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can in, in answering your questions on this product. Anyways, catch you guys next time. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want some more of this. Take care.